All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, force diagram first. What is the minimum downward force? Uh, so, well, in order to decide this uh, minimum downward force, which is here, uh, we will need to draw the free body diagram. So, uh, so we have the downward force that we want to find out. We have the 125 newtons right here. Uh, can you name another force? What could be another force? Normal force, yes. Uh, I'm going to use uh, the letter N with the arrow to represent the normal force. What else is there? There's a friction because we want to stop it from moving. So, uh, and uh, now I believe you have learned about uh, the difference between static and kinetic friction. So because we want to keep it from moving, therefore, this is the static or kinetic friction. So prevent it from moving. Yeah, we want to prevent it from moving. So um, static friction. And there is one more force. What is that force? Gravity. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's gravity right here. Right now, so uh, so before we take a deeper look at the question itself, let's ask a very simple question, and this is the philosophy that I want you all to uh, to uh, to to consider, and that is. Are there any forces that you can tell straight away or you can say, ah, I can just do something to get it almost right away? Look at the diagram. Is there any force that you can say, ah, it's so obvious I can just tell you right now. By the way, the mass of the uh, gravity, yes, because uh, the mass of this box is 30 kilograms. So what's the force to the gravity? The force due to gravity would be 30, 30, 30 kilograms. That's another force. It will be Fg, the formula is uh, F is equal to mg, right? M times G. So uh, the mass is 30 kilograms. So we will multiply by the negative 9.8 meters per second square. So therefore, let me get my calculator. Okay. Now, the reason why I'm asking this question about uh, what you can find out almost right away uh, is because a lot of physics questions are like this. You simply just cannot go too deep yet. It's like cooking. You want to get the ingredient, ingredients ready, and then, uh, and then we can uh, start cooking. But before we cook, we have to uh, collect all the necessary uh, ingredients. So we look around and say, hey, we can get the uh, gravitational force, especially at this early stage. All right, so we got the uh, gravitational force. All right, we are trying to find out this uh, F right here. What else can we tell? right away or almost right away. There's one force that's very, very obvious. Which one? Oh yeah, yes, yes. But, uh, but there's, uh, there's a force that has a value that's really obvious. Which one are you pointing? This one? Well, this one, yeah, that's obvious, but there's something uh, also uh, sort of obvious, like this is super obvious, the 125. <laughs> Friction. Friction must be what? If it's not moving. Greater. Not greater. Okay, it's tempting to say greater, but if it's greater, that means it will go the opposite direction. So the understanding right here is that if it's not moving, the net force in the x direction must be zero. So therefore, the static friction must equal to the force that's applied, pulling forward, but in the negative direction. 
Mm -hmm. We want to keep it, uh, we want to stop it from moving. We want to just say, all right, sit here. Okay, don't move at all. Okay, all right. Uh, so far, so good. So now, 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 okay. Uh, these are the two easy forces. Do you think we can get the normal force? If somebody says, oh, normal force is easy. Normal force is just, uh, wait, hold on. That's the uh, 294 Newtons. If somebody says this, normal force is 294 Newtons. Would you say, yeah, that's correct. Or would, just, would you say, wait, hold on. That is not true. Yeah, it's not true because now I want you to understand why it's not true. It is not moving again, right? So that means the force in the y direction must be zero when they all add up together. So think about uh, over here, these three forces, they must add up to zero. So if you say the Newton force, uh, I mean, the, the normal force is the same as the gravitational force, then they cancel each other out. That means we are not applying any force, that it's kind of weird. Why would they ask you to find the force if they say, uh, yeah, if the normal force is the same. So, so what I want to say here is that this is a very common misconception. And I hope you're not making that misconception. Okay, It might be tempting to say the normal force is equal to the gravitational force. That is only true if you have an object that is sitting still and there's nothing touching it. That's the case. But that is not the case right here. So now. Uh, I understand that you haven't done any calculation with force uh, with friction yet in class. So I'm going to introduce you a formula. Now this formula is also available on your reference chart. Okay, so the force of friction is actually um, uh, is actually directly proportional to two things. One thing is the uh, the mu, okay, this is the mu because uh, this is the letter M and letter U merge together. It's a hybrid, so we call it mu, uh, coefficient of friction. And speaking of coefficient of friction, uh, let me go ahead and um, show you something. Now, this uh, coefficient of friction uh, you don't have to uh, memorize any of these values. So I'm going to show you the values. Okay. So here we go. So we have two columns of uh, coefficient of friction. Uh, so we have the static and kinetic. Now take a look. Which side, it's, uh, which side has a greater value? The static column or the kinetic column? Very consistently, the column of the static friction, or the coefficient of static friction, has a greater value than the uh, than the uh, than the coefficient of uh, kinetic friction because it's always uh, it is always easier to uh, apply a force to keep something uh, to continue something's movement than. Uh, than uh, than to uh, start something from move uh, from a stationary position, okay, and uh, and why do we uh, well we want to have a good grip on the road or the car have a good to have a good grip on the uh, road, so that's why our car tires are made of rubber, okay, so uh, so that's a lot better, and uh, if you look at ice on ice, the number is really small, so that's really really slippery. So now, so I want to introduce you to this equation because we actually have the coefficient of uh, static friction that is 0.35. So we have the coefficient of static friction. We know the we know the friction force. 
So therefore, we can go ahead and calculate and say, oh yeah, so uh, so I have uh, I have two out of the three uh, pieces of information. I could actually go ahead and calculate it. We can calculate the normal force. Now I manually drop the negative because the uh, normal force that we are going to calculate is going to be an upward direction. So uh, if you keep the negative sign, that doesn't really make much sense. So we can just go ahead and drop it. So if you do that, you should find your normal force being 357 newtons. Okay. So far, so good. Okay. Now, let me go ahead and uh, recap for what we have uh, on what we have done so far before we get to the final step. Now, what makes physics difficult is this. Look at the question. What is the minimum downward force on the box in the figure that will keep it from slipping? Okay. Then tell you the constants. Now, if you look at the question, it was a very simple question. They're just saying, hey, there's a force going down. So uh, please go ahead and find a force. And a lot of students, they're like, oh, that looks like a simple problem. But then when you start doing it, you, you realize that, wait, hold on. There's so much we need to find out in order to find the actual answer. And this is why people hate physics, because you've got to develop a very comprehensive lens to look at the scenario. And that's why I started off by asking you all to draw the free body diagram and say, hey, could you find out anything that you could find out? If you do, great, go ahead, find them out. And then we say, oh yeah, so going back to the earlier assumption that uh, all the forces must add up to zero. So we can say, yeah, the normal force plus the force that we are applying downward and the force due to gravitation, uh, no gravitational pull, it should all add up to zero newtons. And now we just insert the values. What's the uh, gravitational force? 294 newtons. And then a normal force is uh, 357 newtons. And we can now go ahead and find out. the force applied, the downward force that we applied, 357 minus 294, uh, and then going to the other side, so the answer will be negative 63 newtons, okay? The force is going down, 63 newtons, okay? All right. Questions, comments? Good. All right. 